When I was a new maker, my homemade sugar scrubs would get really hard if they got too cold and they would turn into separated oily slop if they got too warm. That is no good for a scrub, especially if you are looking to gift them or sell them. Scrubs that stay soft, scoopy, and indulgent do so because they're formulated in a completely different way than the disappointing sugar scrubs of my early making days. Today I'm going to share the secrets of pillowy scrubs and teach you how to make a soft, scoopable sugar scrub that you and your friends will love. Just look at how soft, scoopy, and flat out fun this beautiful scrub is. We're going to make a 700 gram batch today, which comes out to be about 500 milliliters, which is roughly a pint. Before we can start making, we've got to weigh out our ingredients. The first two ingredients are what makes this scrub a foaming scrub. They're both gentle, natural, and create a gorgeous lather, so the scrub is both cleansing and rinses off the skin beautifully. You'll need 28 grams of sodium lauryl sulfo acetate, also known as SLSA. Make sure you are wearing a really well-fitting respirator when you work with this ingredient as breathing in powdered surfactants is unbelievably unpleasant. The second foaming ingredient is 21 grams of decal glucoside. I adore the rich, dense lather this surfactant creates, but if you don't have it, you could use a different glucoside instead, like cocoa glucoside or laurel glucoside. With all of these foaming surfactants, we'll have to be careful not to whip up a bunch of foam as we make this scrub, but more on that later. Our next ingredient does double duty, both contributing to foam and also helping make the overall product milder. It's a really thick, hazy liquid, so it can be a bit tricky to weigh it out. You're going to need 28 grams of Lame Soft PO65. Now we're going to weigh out our exfoliants. So these are the ingredients that make a scrub a scrub. They're the, the scrubby things. Our star exfoliant is something that you can just buy at the grocery store in the baking aisle, and it is 455 grams of white granulated sugar. Swapping out the sugar for another common kitchen exfoliant will completely wreck this formulation. So if you want to learn more about that, please make sure you are reading the totally free partner blog post linked in the description box below this video. For a bit of easily customizable aesthetic loveliness, you'll need seven grams of bursting beads or jojoba beads in a color of your choosing. I'm using gold bursting beads from Brambleberry, but have some fun and use your imagination. You know, pair the color with the scent and the theme. Yeah. The next four ingredients is where that stay soft magic comes in. These ingredients are what really differentiates this formulation from anhydrous self emulsifying scrubs that are susceptible to temperature swings. We're basically creating a lotiony base for the scrub. To emulsify, we'll need seven grams of Redemulse SCG. Our richness boosting moisturizing oil is 31 and a half grams of apricot kernel oil, but you could definitely use a different, relatively lightweight, inexpensive liquid oil instead. This is not the place to use that beautiful bottle of argan oil. This next ingredient has been shown to improve skin hydration in rinse off products, which is awesome because this is a rinse off product. You'll need 21 grams of a 60% sodium lactate solution. And lastly, we've got one of the most important ingredients for that stay soft magic. I used to think that you couldn't include this ingredient in sugar scrubs because it would dissolve the sugar, but there's way too much sugar in this formulation for 88.9 grams of distilled water to dissolve. And our final two ingredients keep this scrub from growing mold and add a really lovely scent without irritating the skin or any of the sensitive bits that are also soaking in your bath water. To preserve the scrub, you'll need 10 and a half grams of Optifin Plus. If you'd like substitution ideas for the preservative, make sure you're reading the partner blog post linked in the description box below. To add a lovely scent, you'll need 2.1 grams of a fragrance oil, and I'm using Christmas Spice Fragrance Oil from Voyager Soap and Candle. I am intentionally not using Christmas Spice essential oils like cinnamon bark or clove bud because they can be quite irritating to the skin. And then in a formulation like this, that irritation can be further amplified by the scrubbing on the skin and by the heat. 
of the bath water. So yeah, a fragrance oil is a less irritating way to go here. Now that we've got all of our ingredients, we just need to transform them into a soft, scoopy sugar scrub. Our first step gets all of the surfactants mixed together without kicking up a ton of foam. Combine the sodium lauryl sulfa acetate, decal glucoside, lame soft PO65, sodium lactate, and apricot kernel oil in a container big enough to hold the whole batch of scrub. So I'm using a four cup Pyrex measuring cup. Stir to combine until the mixture is relatively smooth. You won't get a bunch of bubbles because there's very little water in this mixture, so don't worry about being delicate. You'll know everything is mixed properly when it looks like a pot of white pudding. It'll be glossy, wobbly, and smooth. Up next, stir in the Redemals SCG and then gently add the water. Start by stirring slowly to get it to incorporate without getting really foamy. As the water incorporates, you'll be able to stir more enthusiastically. Now, we won't get very far if the Redemals SCG remains solid, so cover the measuring cup with some cling film and heat it through with a water bath. Give it a stir every now and then, smearing some of the mixtures up the sides of the measuring cup to check for unmelted solid flakes. Redemals SCG melts pretty readily, so if the mixture is thoroughly warmed through and you aren't seeing any solid bits, we're ready to move on. Add the sugar to the creamy base about a third at a time, stirring between additions. It will seem like there is nowhere near enough base for all that sugar, but don't worry, it will work out. You'll actually notice the mixture thinning quite a lot as you add the sugar, and then there's plenty of moisture to lubricate the whole pot. Stir in the colorful bursting beads, the preservative, and the fragrance. And here's where I like to test the pH of the scrub to make sure it's in a good place for our skin and the preservative because the scrub's really still quite runny, and so it's just a lot easier to test. The pH should fall in the five to 5.5 range. If it's lower than four and a half, you want to raise it. And if it's higher than six, you want to lower it. For more information on pH testing and adjusting, please read the free partner blog post. I've included lots of helpful links and more detailed instructions in it. Once you know the pH is in a good place, cover the scrub and leave it for a few hours to thicken up. After a couple hours, the scrub will have thickened into something with the consistency of kind of cake batter. It's going to be thick, pourable, but like barely kind of gooey in a really fun way. This last step is optional. It just gives the scrub more of an opaque, creamy look. Simply whip it with a set of electric beaters until the base of the scrub turns bright white. And now all that's left is packaging the scrub. I'm using two 250 milliliter or eight ounce jars from Yellow Bee. Now let's see how this scrub works. It's got lovely lather and you can see the bath water getting all milky and moisturizing. And now you know how to make a sugar scrub that lathers beautifully, stays scoopy and soft, and transforms your bath water into an indulgent milky soak. After a bath, your skin needs a good moisturizer to keep it soft and silky and happy. Click here to learn how to make one of my favorites. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you next time.